We know that chemical reactions happen because atoms want to form bonds that make them more stable. And as a result of that stability, we can say that they have a certain amount of potential energy. So in a typical reaction, we would start out with our reactants. In this case, that is hydrogen and iodine. And as a result of their stability, or the stability of those bonds, they have a certain potential energy. And we can write here that that is hydrogen and iodine's combined potential energy. We know that the hydrogen molecule is just two hydrogens that are combined, and the iodine molecule is two iodine atoms that are combined. We also know from collision theory that in order for a reaction to happen, a certain amount of energy is required in order for the reaction to be successful, or in order for the collision to be successful. So when that energy is supplied, you can see that the potential energy would increase. We say that that amount of energy that is supplied, the amount of energy from the energy of the reactants to the maximum amount of energy is known as the activation energy, which is the energy required for a reaction to start. For interest sake, as explained in collision theory, in order for this to happen, it forms what is called the activated complex, which is a transition state where the collision has occurred. It's occurred in the correct orientation, and we have formed a transition state. We have formed something that has the ability to go back to forming hydrogen and iodine, but it also has the ability to break apart into two new molecules, those of hydrogen iodide. Now, in an exothermic reaction, which is what we have here, when that happens, the amount of energy or the potential energy that hydrogen iodide molecules have is lower, meaning it is a more stable molecule than individual hydrogen and iodine molecules. So what we say is that the products in this reaction, the product being hydrogen iodide, has a lower potential energy than the reactants. And as we can see here, there's a certain amount of energy that has been given off in this reaction because these compounds started with a certain potential energy and they ended with a lower potential energy. And we call that the enthalpy change. It is basically the amount of heat that is given off in a reaction. As we can see in this reaction, the enthalpy change has been negative, meaning it has given off energy, and we would write that as either delta H is less than zero, or if you know for the specific reaction, this one, for example, has an enthalpy change of negative 9.48 kilojoules per mole that reacts. Both of these are just ways of saying that the products are more stable and therefore have a lower potential energy than the reactants, which means that this reaction, every time hydrogen and iodine combine to form hydrogen iodide, every time that happens, a certain amount of energy is given off. We say that energy goes into the system and the system heats up. So exothermic reactions are defined by a negative enthalpy change as well as a reaction mixture, the entire mixture of this reaction that heats up over time.